Hello everybody, this is Steve, your Everyday Guy here, and in today's video, we're going to do the brakes and the rotors on my 2014 Buick Enclave. Now, this is going to be kind of a long video, so what I've done is I've gone down into the comments section and the description, and I've put uh, timestamps for each individual step that we're going to do. That way, if you need to go back and look at something, you can go right down there and see exactly where you want to go look at in the video, so you don't have to watch all the way through. Um, before you do it, I recommend you watch the whole thing, though, to kind of give you an idea of what you're going to do. Before we do that, though, please hit that like and subscribe button. That way, when I post new videos, you do get notified. And also, um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those. I'd love to hear from you guys. And for now, we're going to roll in. We're going to talk a little bit about the tools we're going to use. Then we're going to get into the job that we're going to do. So here's the tools we used. This is a socket wrench with a 14 millimeter socket on it. There's a wrench for the 18 millimeter. Those were used to remove the caliper. The hammer, which is removed to use the rotor. So if you're just doing the brakes, you won't need the hammer. Then we've got the grease for the caliper and a brush to apply it. A brake depression tool. And because we also replaced the rotor, we did need a 22 millimeter socket to break the uh, caliper bracket off with. And the T30 was also used to remove that screw on the rotor. And one thing I always recommend is I recommend gloves to wear just so you're not getting so messy. I use nitrite gloves when I was applying the grease and those other gloves were used for the tires and the brake loose and everything. And you may need a screw to pry the uh, brake calipers apart or you may or may not need a screwdriver. So that's kind of one of those iffy tools and that was all the tools I used. Once you've got the tire off, the next thing you're going to want to do is get the caliper off. To do that, um, there's going to be one bolt or kind of a nut type thing right there and then a bolt back here and you're, if you just turn this the one I've got the socket wrench on it'll spin around and won't actually come loose to let you know the size I've got size of socket I'm using is a 14 millimeter socket and my wrench is an 18 millimeter wrench and to loosen it up I'm going to want to turn counterclockwise so make sure you're set and then you got your other one in place and you're just going to break it loose now when it comes to these, it doesn't take much effort to get these loose. They shouldn't really be all that tight. I've worked on some cars in the past though where they're really cranked on there. And so it's almost impossible to get them loose. But um, on this one, it doesn't seem too bad. Um, break the top one loose, now for the bottom one. And you'll notice the type of socket I use, it's got a little flex there. And that comes in real handy when you're doing brake work. Because you'll notice you got your um, in here where you might not have enough room to get in so that gives you and it'll usually give you some extra leverage so I've got those loose I'm just gonna take those out by hand and so remember when you're putting these back on you do not have to crank those super hard you'll want them snug but you don't want to over tighten it Alright, so we got those two. I love my little mechanic stool I use. That gives me a nice, easy place to sit so I don't have to squat down the whole time. And a place to put my bolts and stuff. So now that I've got those loose, I'm just going to take my caliper off. Alright, once I've got the caliper, I'm going to take that. I'm going to set that right up here on top where it's got plenty of support. You do not want the caliper hanging by the hose. That can, do, that can damage your hose or worse, break it. So now I've got the caliper off, the next thing I'm going to do is I've got a bolt here and a bolt here. That takes this off, that little frame that kind of holds the caliper and the pads on there. So for that I'm using a 22 millimeter socket and we're going to put that on there. The thing is, is I don't think this has ever been taken off for this vehicle, it's 2014, it's about 10 years old. So what we're going to do is make sure that's set the right way. Now we're going to... Got that one loose. Now, that one loose. All right. So we got those broken loose. Now we can actually just take them out. One thing, you'll see me loosening the top one first. Um, when you're working on these, I always recommend you remove the bottom one first. And the reason is, is if you remove the top one first, while you're working on the bottom one, this whole thing could just flip right down and end up whacking you on the hand. So by removing the bottom one first, that makes sure you don't have to worry about that.
All right, so we got that one out. Putting that right on the tray under my seats. So I have six lug nuts I removed with the tire, and this will make four bolts I've taken out. See, you can really see that spinning as I try to take it out. Imagine if that was a, if that whole thing was flopping around the other way. up all right and that of course just fell right out now you can see the pink on there I think that's the original Loctite I don't think these have been removed in the entire history of this vehicle you can also see the brake pads fell right off with it now just to keep track of these bolts I want to put them right back in there That way that's two less things that can get lost. One of the things I like to be sure and inspect when I take these off is I like to look at the, um, the condition of the brake pads as I remove them. And the reason I really like to do that is I'll kind of give you an idea of what the condition of your rotors are. So this one, huh, these brake pads actually aren't that bad. I did the other side previously and yeah, those are really bad. It's, stay and watch to the end, and I'll show you what they look like. And that'll kind of give you an idea, because, and that's why I'm doing my rotors. Um, looking at this side, that rotor's not too bad. I pro if, um, if both rotors were this way, I wouldn't be doing the rotors. But since the other ones look like they did, that's why I'm going to do the rotors. Got my handy-dandy auto hammer. All right. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to put my brake pads on the side of the brake where they go because some of them will have an inside pad and an outside pad on this vehicle with the pads that i bought they were the same pad um, i don't know if that's the case with all brands which because i found it kind of odd they were so what i'm gonna do next is there is a little bolt right there which is a t30 i've got it on my handy dandy impact wrench make sure i get that seated in there correctly. and that just comes right out now the next part is getting the rotor loose now keep in mind these rotors have probably been on here for 10 years so they're not coming off easy So now that I've removed them with a the hammer to break them loose, all right, I've taken them off. Now, um, this rotor, it's extremely rusty, but overall it's actually in pretty good condition. So technically I might have gotten away with just replacing one, but I'm of the personal philosophy, always do things in pairs. That way you have even wearing on the vehicle. The other thing I'm going to do is you'll see right here, there's a little plug. See that on the outside so i'm just going to use my little screwdriver to push that out all right i have the removal phase done now is it i've got to go ahead and get them when you take your brake pads off you always want to make sure and take a look at them because they'll tell you a lot about what's going on in your rotor so right here you can see there's a groove there there's a groove up there so those are actually pretty deep grooves so what that tells you is that you either need to get new rotors or you need to get your rotors trimmed. When you get your rotors trimmed, that makes them a flat, even surface. And the reason is, is that those are deep grooves. What that means is on the rotor, there's actually a high point that's sticking up. And if you simply put new brake pads on, 
Your brake pads will only make contact with the high point and won't make contact with the rotor, which means you will lose a lot of stopping power. So once I took those off, I realized I just need to go ahead and get new rotors. So I took those off, went and got new rotors, put those on there, and I'm looking forward to being able to stop properly. All right, so we've got our bracket for our brake pads. So one of the things to remember when we're working on this bracket, this is pointing into the axle. So that means the curve of the tire is going to go like this. It's going to go like this. So we put the brake pads on, we need to put them on this way because if we put them on this way, they'll be curved wrong. So the first thing we're going to do is because I purchased um, brake hardware with my brake pads, I'm going to take the old ones off. And those we're going to make sure they get disposed up properly. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put caliper grease on, on here. And what this does is this is just kind of something to help keep moisture out and a little bit of squeaking after you do the um, brake pad, the brake job. So the last thing you want is to be walking or driving down the road just squeaking, squeaking, squeaking. So next room, you can use your finger. I'm old and tired of getting my hands really messy with possible carcinogenic stuff. So I use a brush and you'll notice I wear gloves. To me, it's just easier. That way I don't have to spend all day trying to scrub every single piece of grease out from the contours of my fingers. All right, so we've got everything there where it's been made up and we're just gonna take our hardware and we're gonna put this in here like so. All right, so we've got that one in. Now we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna do this side. You can buy this in tubes. Um, I found, or you get individual, like I think it's like two gram packets. I end up doing brake jobs like because of all the vehicles I go through and vehicles I take care of, I do brake jobs probably once every two to three years. Not the same vehicle, of course, different vehicles. And so I've decided to just start buying the tubes. If you, if you're a type of person that just works on your vehicle and you only do it, and you uh, probably wouldn't need to buy a whole tube, it'd probably go bad by the time you did it again. But for me, I just want the tube. So now I'm painting all of my surfaces. So we're going to take the last piece of hardware. Gonna put it on there now. Usually, when it comes to brake shoes, the brake shoes are directional. But the odd thing was, is when I looked at this, these were not. So what we're gonna do? Remembering the curved part goes inside. There's, we're gonna put the brake shoes on before we put this onto the rotor. And the reason is, is I can see it really easy when I'm out here. When it's down inside the brake rotor, I can't see it very well. So that's why I'm choosing to do this part now. All right, so we're just getting everything on there. Very liberal amounts. It's again, partially to seal out moisture, partially just so we don't get some squeaks going down the road. So now, take that, we'll put that in there, and this part in here. As you can see, it's not all right, there we go, we got one in. As you can see how and how painfully annoying that was to get in. I am very glad that I'm doing this before I put it on the vehicle. All right. Get that all that good. All right, you can see right here, I've got two holes. One hole here, one hole there. One of those is for my screw. The other one is for my little rubber grommet. So the little rubber grommet is gonna go right there. And you'll know because that's the hole, that's the larger of the two holes. Right, did I say wood? Oh, it's rubber. So I've got that in. Next is this hole here, which is threaded. So I'm gonna take this. Now, one thing I wanna point out, that hole is threaded too. So when you put this on, Temptation may be to just put that on and start drilling that in with your power tool. Don't do that. You'll you'll end up cross-threading your screw. So what we're going to do? 
So make sure that's in all the way. Then we're just going to start threading that in. And you'll notice it's not really going in the easiest, which is why you don't just want to start putting it in with your power tools. Because your power tool will definitely just rip that right in and cross thread it. Just having a hard time getting it in there, so I'm just using my power tool for more leverage. All right, so now we have got that in there good. I'm gonna put that in there. Now we're just going to give it a little zap. Oh. <laughs> and of course, I had it on reverse. Just make sure your direction is correct. Alright, so we got that in there. Alright, now it doesn't need to be on there super tight. You'll notice I didn't zap that down as fast, as hard as it would go, but I did it enough to make sure that it was snug. Alright, now that we got that done, we're ready to work on our calipers. Alright, so now that we have our calipers and our brake caliper pat bracket, then we're going to get this on here. So we may need to kind of squeeze Oh, that's well, shoot. Alright. So that one popped out, but we still have that inner one in there, which make, which is the big one we want in there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our bolts threaded through here. Get that right into where it goes. All right, so we got that there. This one's going to go here. So we're gonna get those in as far as we can. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch our socket wrench. Now one thing I'm not sure is if I'm actually threaded in there right. And the one thing you don't want to be is cross-threaded. The dreaded cross-thread. So this bottom one that we know is in there right. Let's go ahead and snug that up. Now this top one that we're a little unsure of, we're going to back that out. It seems to be going in there awfully hard. Alright, so now we got that out. Now let's get that back in there. Well, one of the things that makes it hard to tell is that these have the original Loctite still on them. So I don't know if I'm running into that or what's going on here. So we're going to go ahead and turn this. I think it's going in all right. There we are. I think we're just getting past the Loctite. So now it's going to be much easier. up there. See my gut getting smaller. All right, get turn really easy now. All right, now I'm ready to snug it. All right, got that one snugged. One thing I'm not doing is I'm not really over torquing it. I'm just get, making sure it's tight, which it is. All right, so now we've got those in. My outside brake shoe popped out, but that's not so bad because I can see it. If it was the inside one, that one is a pain in the butt to get in. So we're just going to go ahead and Keep that in the bottom one first. There we are. So we got that seated in there. Got the top one there. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do is our brake cylinder. We need to compress our brake cylinder. We're going to go ahead and depress that brake caliper. To do that, we're going to use this tool here. And we're going to need one of the brake shoes. So the first thing we're going to do is I like, I like to go ahead and 
I don't like to do it with it twisted. So we're gonna put that there. Next thing we're gonna do is we have to, I have to back this out to make sure it's at the right distance. Almost there. Now the one thing you want to make sure is that cable, make sure that that cable is never supporting any weight. Because we don't want to put any strain on that cable because that becomes a very expensive fix. Now we've got that in there, so what we're doing is we're just kind of tightening. The nice one is, is these aren't twists, these are just compression. So what I'm doing is as I twist this, it's going to push that in. So you can see me twisting it. And you'll see I'm kind of just supporting all the weight here with this finger. Um, I'm doing a little slowly, that way we can make sure that little boot seats all the way down in there properly. So I give it a couple twists, wait a second, give it a couple twists, wait a second, give it a couple twists, wait a second, give it a couple twists, wait a second. You can see right there how it's really going down into there. A couple twists, wait a little bit. Because what I'm doing is as I press this in, it's pushing the fluid back up through this brake line and into the master cylinder. Um, when you're doing brakes, always do them the set at a time. So if you're doing the front, do both the front. If you're doing the back, both the back. Um, if your pads are really, really low between wheels, go ahead and go up there and press that brake pad to get that cylinder back down as much as it can. That way you're not squirting wa um, brake fluid out the top. All right, so I almost got that all the way. Getting really close. All right, hey, we've got that all the way back in. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna loosen that up, take that off. All right, so now you can see right there, that piston is all the way in and our seal is properly seated all the way around. What's next is we're gonna put our grease on every single surface that's gonna have contact with the shoe. On this side with the piston, all you need it on is just this little O-ring. And the reason is, is once you get on there and press the brake, it's going to push that out, and that's the only side that's going to be touching. Make sure you watch the end, because there's some very important information I'm going to go over, which can save you from having an accident. So don't, don't leave now. So I'm just getting that all covered up. All right. So we've got that all well lubed. Now we're going to do this inside here and here. So I've got my grease, got that there, got that there. And once again, it's only I only need to worry about the places that it's going to make contact with the brake shoes. So let's just take that and do our painting, la da da, do our painting there. Let's cover that all with the grease. Go ahead and wipe off the excess there. All right, so now, we're gonna put the caliper back on, so let me put that away. We've got our brake caliper compressed, so we're gonna take our brake caliper itself, make sure that there's no twists in the cord, and slide that right on there. And you'll notice it goes on pretty easy because you've got that piston compressed all the way. All right, so we've got that bolt in. <clears throat> and we've got this bolt in. All right, we just get them hand started. All right, got that hand started. Got that one hand started. One of the things you wanna do while you got this off is check your boots and stuff. Um, if your boots are rubbing down or deteriorating, it's probably a good thing to just go ahead and replace those while they are there. Remember, once you've got your tire off, your caliper off, you've done all the hard work. If anything looks like it may need replaced, replace it. I mean. It costs a little bit more, but it saves you the hassle of having to go through and do it all again because this overall is not really the most pleasant processes. So now what we're going to do, we're going to reverse it to where we're tightening next and then get that on there. All right, now we're going to tighten these. Remember, you don't need to torque them down a lot, but you do want to make sure they're tight. Got that one tight. Now for the last one. All right, now don't don't stop now because there's a couple important things I want to tell you about that's gonna save you from wrecking your vehicle. The first thing is, is your piston is all the way pushed in. 
what you want to do when you get back in is you want to pump the brake three or four times make sure you're getting a good brake feel to it that'll make sure that the first time you go to stop you don't press it all the way to the floor and can't stop now once you've got that done you're ready to leave the driveway do not go fast slowly pull out of the driveway pumping your brakes kind of pressing it i'm getting started if you did not replace the rotors one of the things you'll be doing is you'll be knocking some of the rust off with the new brake pads which means you're not getting a clean connection to stop so take a slow drive kind of press a little bit knock that rust off um, really though if you're doing your brakes you want to go ahead and replace if you're not replacing your rotors you do want to get them trimmed a lot of auto zones will or o'reilly's map of those types of places they'll trim your rotors for free to take them in downside is you have to have two vehicles for that or a friend but like I said, just make sure to take it out, take, go it slow, go on side streets. Do not go straight to the interstate to hit 70 miles an hour. Take it on some side streets, take it slow, um, turn a few corners, make sure you're able to stop properly. And, uh, you know, go a few miles like that just to make sure everything is all set. But now you can see we've got brand new rotors, brand new brake pads, and we got it all installed. All I got to do is throw my tire back on and I am ready to go. If you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. And also, do not be afraid to comment. I love to hear your comments. I like to reply to them. If you feel that this was a great video, let me know. If you think I could have done something better, hey, let me know that too. I like hearing your feedback. This is Steve, your Everyday Guy. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.